What is going on guys? Who will be the 2020 version of Ryan Tannehill? Well, in order to answer that question, you're going to need to know which starting quarterbacks around the NFL are the most likely to lose their starting jobs. After all, in order for one of the league's current backup QBs to become the next breakout sensation, they'll need the men sitting ahead of them on the depth chart to slip up somehow. Some which starters are most likely to give way to the man holding the clipboard behind them. Here are eight NFL quarterbacks who are in the most danger of losing their starting job in 2020. Number 8, Sam Darnold. This may seem ludicrous and all, given how much the Jets have invested in Darnold as their long-term quarterback, but the number 3 selection from 2018 hasn't found any consistency whatsoever in his game. He's gone 11 and 15 as a starter through his first 2 seasons, with a mere 59.9 completion percentage and 39 touchdowns against a whopping 28 interceptions. Now we like to point out that Darnold and the Jets won 6 of their final 8 games in 2019. Sure, but most of those victories came against against lowly teams such as the Dolphins, Washington Redskins, and Giants. The Jets can't afford to endure another slow start with Darnold. He's got to make it work with Le'Veon Bell, Rashad Perryman, and rookie Denzel Mims. If Darnold and the Jets struggle out of the gate again, don't be shocked if coach Adam Gase turns to Joe Flacco. Yes, the latter has been banged up in recent years, but he had some good games with the rebuilding Denver Broncos last year. Flacco and his deep arm may actually be a good fit for Gase's offense. So who knows? This isn't to say that the Jets should suddenly give up on Darnold if he plays badly, but it wouldn't be a shock if Flacco finished out his 2020 season as the starter while the coaches and front office reevaluate their quarterback situation. The pressure is really on Darnold to shrug off two sluggish seasons and to finally break out right here in 2020. And the Jets definitely need it more than ever. Number 7, Baker Mayfield. The Cleveland Browns gave journeyman signal caller Case Keenum a rather generous three-year deal worth $18 million in free agency. You think it has something to do with the new head coach Kevin Stefanski having some familiarity with Keenum. The former served as Keenum's quarterback's coach in 2017, when the Minnesota Vikings reached the NFC Championship game after all. That may be part of it. But giving Keenum that much money to hold a clipboard tells us that the Browns could give him a look under center if Baker Mayfield struggles again in year 3. In his 2018 rookie season, Mayfield tossed 27 touchdown passes, the most ever for a first-year quarterback. But Mayfield and the Browns got a little too cocky heading into 2019, and they seemed way out of sync under unqualified head coach Freddie Kitchens. Baker, in particular, experienced a major regression, recording just 22 touchdowns against a whopping 21 interceptions, and he was sacked 40 times. Yeah, that's not good. There's no more excuses for the 2018 first overall pick. The Browns signed stud offensive lineman Jack Conklin in free agency, and and they drafted Alabama prospect Jedrick Wills Jr. Mayfield should have some much better pass protection as a result. They also added tight ends Austin Hooper and Harrison Bryant to a group of offensive skill players that already include Nick Chubb, Odo Beckham Jr., and Jarvis Landry. So Mayfield will have no shortage of weapons at his disposal as well. All of those talented pass catchers, a repatched offensive line, and a new head coach means one thing for Mayfield. It's go time. If it's another embarrassing year for Mayfield in the land, well, Stefanski should have no problem turning to Keenum. They had plenty of success together in 2017. And let's remember that Stefanski and new GM Andrew Berry weren't here when the Browns drafted Mayfield. They don't owe him any loyalty whatsoever. So it's time for Mayfield to ignore the noise, play football, and win some games. And stop doing commercials. Sounds easy, right? Well, it better be. Otherwise, don't be overly shocked if Keenum wins over the starting duties. Number 6, Philip Rivers. The Indianapolis Colts signed Rivers to a one-year deal worth $25 million in free agency. It was smart to only give him the one year, because there are some signs to suggest that he's on the decline. Rivers threw nine less touchdown passes in 2019 compared to 2018, and he finished with a whopping 20 interceptions. His 88.5 quarterback rating was third worst of his career as a starter. But of course, many of his struggles in 2019 have to be attributed to the woeful Los Angeles Chargers offensive line. Pro Football Focus ranked them 29th out of the 32 teams for the 2019 season. The Colts were ranked third, so a bounce back season should be in order for Rivers. Like, I could definitely see it happening. He also reunites with Frank Reich, who served as his quarterback coach in 2013 when he won the Comeback Player of the Year award. The pieces are in place for Rivers. It's actually the perfect fit, so we can definitely turn it around. A savvy offensive minded head coach, a superb O line, and several weapons ranging from T.Y. Hill to Marlon Mack. But what if Father Time has truly taken a toll on Rivers? Maybe he's really done as a reliable starting quarterback. I doubt it. I think he still has some in him. But in that case, the Colts can turn to one of the league's better backups in Jacoby Brissett, who served as the starter in 2017 and 2019. Otherwise, rookie Jacob Eason could even get the nod. Unlikely, but you never know. So no pressure, Phil. You're only playing for what most certainly will be your final starting gig in the NFL. So don't screw it up. He'll be fine. I have faith in you. Number 5, Jarrett Stidham. 
Countless football fans and analysts were shocked when the New England Patriots didn't add an established veteran quarterback like Cam Newton or Andy Dalton to replace Tom Brady. Bill Belichick didn't bother to draft the quarterback either. The reason is simple. He and Josh McDaniels have complete faith in Stidham. They believe the 2019 fourth round pick is ready to step in and take over as the starter. Nobody replaces veteran stars with younger and cheaper options like Belichick. So he and Stidham should get the benefit of the doubt. But what if Stidham struggles early and shows he's not actually ready for the spotlight just yet? Well, Belichick can always fall back on longtime Brady backup Ryan Hoyer. He could even trade for a backup like Jacoby Brissett or Jameis Winston. Belichick doesn't waste any time when it comes to benching, trading, or releasing starters who don't get it done. For all we know, it could take just one or two bad outings from Stidham to lose the starting job. Unfortunately for Stidham, the Patriots haven't really supplied him with many weapons. It's the same group that Brady failed to do much with last year. An aging Julian Edelman, unproven youngster Nikhil Harry, the ever so average Muhammad Sanu, an okay rushing game, and a constantly changing offensive line. Other than that, everything should be fine. So good luck replacing the GOAT, Jarrett. I'm sure you can do it. Number four, Dwayne Haskins. The Washington Redskins don't have a set starter for 2020, but Haskins should be considered the favorite to start in week one. Drafted 15th overall by the Redskins in 2019, Haskins predictably struggled on a terrible team that was dealing with more ridiculous drama involving the owner, president, and head coach. Haskins lost five of seven starts, completing just 58.6% of his passes for seven touchdowns and as many interceptions. Of course, it was hard to do much when Terry McLaurin was the only receiver on the team to surpass the 400-yard mark. McLaurin was the only reliable pass catcher with 919 yards and seven TDs on 58 Eight receptions. Haskins is going to need more help than that if he wants to keep his starting job throughout his sophomore season. Keep in mind that new head coach Ron Rivera wasn't here when Washington drafted Haskins. Rivera doesn't have to commit to Haskins whatsoever. Oh, and by the way, Washington traded for Kyle Allen, who served as Rivera's quarterback in Carolina while Cam Newton was hurt. Assuming Haskins starts the season, well, he better get rolling as soon as possible, because Rivera will not hesitate to turn to a more familiar face in Allen, should Haskins struggle. Rivera is no-nonsense coach. He's not going to be very patient with Haskins. He came to D.C. to win. Riverboat Ron will go with who he trusts the most, so Haskins better earn that trust quick, or he could be holding a clipboard by October. Number three, Tyrod Taylor. The loss Los Angeles Chargers didn't bring back up Phillip Rivers, and they lost the Tom Brady sweepstakes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Instead of trying to bring in a proven starter like Andy Dalton, Cam Newton, or Teddy Bridgewater, they settled on former Buffalo Bills starter Tyrod Taylor for the time being. Not that Taylor has the starting job completely locked up or anything. The Chargers did select Justin Herbert with the number six selection in the 2020 draft, but the Oregon product may not be as NFL ready as fellow 2020 draftees Joe Burrow and Tua Tonga-Vailoa. However, if Taylor isn't producing the results, well, Anthony Lynn may have no choice but to turn to Herbert. Thing is, Taylor is good enough to serve as a bridge quarterback. He served that purpose nicely with the 2018 Browns before making way for Baker Mayfield. But the Chargers are loaded with veteran pro bowlers, and they simply need Taylor to be more than average. They need him to be very good if they want to make the playoffs. If Taylor produces like the guy we saw in Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo! That should be good enough. But if he performs poorly and holds the star-studded offensive back, then Lynn won't waste any time making a switch. His coaching job may be on the line as well. So if the only solution is to bench Taylor in favor of Herbert, so be it. This could very well be Tyrod's final opportunity at a starting gig. It'll be interesting to see how long he'll hold on to it for. Number two, Derek Carr. Carr's numbers have been solid under head coach John Gruden. But at the end of the day, the poorest record speaks for itself. The Raiders recorded losing seasons in five of Carr's six first years. He is 39 and 55 as a starter. It's hardly spectacular. Las Vegas wisely decided to put the pressure on Carr this offseason by signing former Tennessee Titans starter Marcus Mariota to a two year, $17.6 million contract. The Raiders have supplied Carr with several more offensive weapons, including rookie wideouts Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards, plus veteran tight end Jason Witten. They should all do a wonderful job complementing the likes of Darren Waller, Tyrell Williams, and Josh Jacobs. Carr now has a stout O line, a top tier run running back, and several playmaking pass catchers. If this isn't enough for him, nothing will ever be. The Raiders will happily give Mariota the chance to revive his career the same way Ryan Tannehill did in Tennessee when he replaced a struggling Mariota. It's now or never for Carr. One can argue that Mariota is a better quarterback. A couple bad outings from Carr could be all it takes to force Gruden to make the switch. Number one, Mitch Trubisky. This is it. The grand finale. The last chance. Do or die. I mean, he's not going to die, but you know what I'm saying. But it's the last dance. This is the last chance for Trubisky. Mitch will either play like a number two overall pick is expected to, or he will go straight to the
the bench. There is no in between. The Chicago Bears aren't going to stay patient with him anymore if he struggles again in 2020. Many were baffled by the Bears' decision to keep Trubisky, but then they traded for Super Bowl 52 MVP Nick Foles, and suddenly it all made sense. The Bears have to give Mitch one more opportunity to prove himself. It's too early to just give up on him, but it's not too early to get plan B into place. And that's exactly what the Bears did by acquiring Foles. The pressure is really on for Trubisky now. No more fooling around. It seems like just about everyone has given up on him at this point. Even the Bears refused to pick up the fifth year option on his rookie contract, but they're still holding out a bit of hope keeping him around. A couple bad games to start the season, however, and you can bet your bottom dollar that Matt Nagy won't hesitate to send the former second overall pick to the bench. Which NFL quarterback do you think is in the most danger of losing his starting job? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We are on everything. Go subscribe, go follow, go do everything. Uh, TPS posts great memes. I post videos. The whole thing. Go follow us. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click down below and subscribe to TPS. We post videos every day. Every day is a new video. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. See you next time. My name.